start recording. It's view. All right, let's get started. Hey, we got a big crowd uh, today, which is great. Uh, uh, we do. Uh, my name is Bob Harford. I'm with the Potomac Wave Consulting. I head up the Fed Data Check team. Uh, I think most of you know us through your department's implementation of Fed Data Check and uh, FPDSNG data quality alerts and our contractor responsibility assessment report, which we'll talk about. But anyway, if you're not familiar with us through that, just through the webinars, that's great too. Uh, they'll, this one will take about an hour, and uh, I'm going to go through more about uh, who I am, who Fed Data, what Fed Data Check is, and who Potomac Wave Consulting is. At the end, if you've uh, already heard that, feel free to drop off. Uh, we do uh, many agencies do award a CLP point for these webinars. I haven't heard of anybody being turned down for a CLP point. Uh, but to do that, uh, do a couple things, um, please, to help you enhance your the certainty of getting that CLP point. Leave the your screen share. When you're looking at my screen, leave that on your main menu, and we're going to have some poll questions. Participate in the poll questions. If you do those two things, the CLP point gets uh, easier to be acquired. And we'd like to make it interactive. So if you have a question, comment, anything like that, uh, raise your hand, I'll unmute you and uh, share it with the group. Uh, okay, uh, let's get started. So what we're gonna review today is determining sub-awardee responsibility. Um, so we all, uh, I suspect everyone here has gone into SAM, gone into FAPIS, done a few other things to see if uh, the prospective awardee uh, is a responsible vendor, uh, does not have a lot of derogatory information about them. Uh, uh, by all accounts, uh, seems like they'll be able to do the statement of work based on their track record in SAM, uh, FAPIS, I'm sure uh, a lot of people look in CPARS as well. So we're going to be looking at how you would do that, but instead of the prime awardee, how would how would you do that for the sub awardee? So for the agenda, we're going to look at uh, what the FAR says about uh, doing a CRA, Contractor Responsibility Assessment both for prime awardees and sub awardees. We're gonna look at uh, why, why would you wanna run a responsibility assessment on a sub awardee or uh, double check that your prime primes are doing that assessment. Here's a good one. Where can you find out who your sub awardees are? It's actually not that easy. Once you've identified your sub-awardees, that is your COCS with a, uh, a list of active awards, once you've identified the sub-awardees on those active awards, what, what do you do in terms of what are the steps to do a CRA on that sub-awardee? We'll look at how you would do it using SAM and FAPIS via a manual method, and we'll look at it how you would do it using our product, Fed Data Check. And then the last question is, are your prime awardees properly reporting their sub-awards? And we'll do a review. Uh, some definitions here. I'm gonna keep an eye too on questions. We do have a big group, so I need to scroll, but okay. Some definitions here. When you see the acronym CRA, that stands for Contractor Responsibility Assessment which is a report that fulfills uh, actions required by FAR 9.1. Uh, 
and in particular checks SAM and FAPIS regarding the su suitability of a vendor to perform on a federal contract. Are they debarred? Have they been paying their taxes? Uh, are they currently under indictment? That would be things you would get from SAM. FAPIS, how many times have they been terminated for cause or default within the last five years? Here's some synonyms, subcontractor, subawardee, subrecipient. Sometimes they have hyphens, sometimes they don't, but all those three are synonyms. Subcontractee, subaward, subrecipient, what are they? That's a vendor who has a subaward. Someone who's been given a, uh, awarded a contract by the federal government, a prime awardee, uh, then in turn, uh, that vendor uh, enters into a contract with another vendor on a subcontracting basis. If you're the latter, if you're the recipient of that subcontractor from a prime, all these three are synonyms, subcontractor, subawardee, subrecipient. Same thing for primes, we've got some synonyms going there, prime awardees, prime contractors, prime recipient, those, if you see those, one of those three terms, they all mean the same thing. Okay, uh, let's see, what does the FAR say regarding contract responsibility assessments for prime awardees? So the FAR requires it for prime awardees, obviously. Uh, we, we can go out and take a look, FAR, why don't we do that? FAR 9.31A. So I, anytime you see that in the PowerPoint deck that I'm gonna send you, um, wait a minute, I got someone who says they can't hear me. Uh, can, it, can I just get a sound? Could one person raise their hand if you can hear me? There we go. I, I got a lot of hands up. Okay, Denise has got it now. Thank you. Oof, I had trouble yesterday on a webinar with people not hearing me, so that uh, Denise, you had me going there for a second, but okay, I'm glad people could hear me. It's good to check. Uh, 9103A in the FAR, purchases shall be made from and contractors shall be awarded to responsible prospective contractors only. Doesn't this, doesn't precisely define what that is. That's up to, that's why I presume most of you are uh, COs or CSs here. That's why you have warrants and training and certifications is to make that judgment call. Uh, 9-1047A requires inserting clause 52-2095 if the base on all options value is above the set. This FAR requires 52-2091-11 in all solicitations. And we're going to look at what that is. Why don't we look at one, an example of that? Okay, so if I was doing an assessment, if I was going to fulfill FAR 9103A and make sure that I was only uh, awarding to responsible uh, contractors, one thing I have to check are these two, I have to insert these clauses into the contract and I should also check before the award is made. So let's, so those clauses go in the contract. The, when the vendor responds to the solicitation, they provide the answers to those clauses. And those answers are also available in their latest SAM record. I got that wrong. Someone could raise their hand, but uh, let's go take a look. Let's say you were doing a Contract Responsibility Assessment on Safeguard Document Destruction, Inc. As you can tell, I went to SAM.gov. I clicked on Search Records. I pasted in the nine-digit DUNS number, and I hit Search. Now, what happens, according to a GAO report that we'll see a little bit later, is that a lot of COs apparently are stopping here. COs and CSs say, I don't see any purple. They're not the barred. So let's look at their 
uh, response to the solicitation and see if they're the best one for the uh, for the award. That's not what that FAR 9103A is saying to do. Uh, what you have to do in addition to looking for the purple, the department, is click on View Details, click on Reps and Certs, and scroll down to 52.209.11. This is a part of all solicitations, and you have to check if they have any unpaid federal tax liability, current unpaid federal tax liability. And they have to verify that they're not currently convicted of a felony criminal violation. So there's 52 2911. Uh, that has to be inspected before every award. 52.2095 comes into play if it's the base of all options values above the SAT. And there you're looking at debarment. You would have already seen that with the purple. So that, that's redundant. But B is uh, within, the three, within the preceding three-year period, been convicted or had a civil judgment rendered against them for fraud, criminal offense, indicted or otherwise criminally or civilly charged within the three-year period preceding this offer at a delinquent federal tax, an amount that exceeds 3,500 and which remains unpaid. So that's, that's what's meant here uh, on this. That's one of the uh, essential requirements, uh, FAR requirements uh, for assessing contractor responsibility. Going to SAM, checking their answers, to those two sections here and um, inserting those clauses into the contract accordingly. Okay, but the, the webinar today is about subawardees. What does the FAR say about doing a responsibility assessment on the subawardees? Uh, the FAR requires it for subawardees as well, but it's the responsibility of, of the primes to do it. So if you look at 91044A, we get up there. Subcontractor responsibility. Generally, prospective prime contractors are responsible for determining the responsibility of their prospective subcontractors. Um, here's another one in FAR 9405. If you're the CEO and uh, the, uh, you cannot consent to a subcontract uh, with the barred vendors, pretty obvious. Just like you cannot make a new award to a debarred vendor barring exceptional approval and extenuating circumstances, you cannot consent to a subcontract via your prime with a debarred vendor unless you obtain civil, similar, let's see what the approval is, 9405. Agencies shall not solicit offers from award contracts to or consent to subcontracts uh, and with these contractors under those conditions and for that period. But there is something where you can Well, uh, let's see where I've said with you. <clears throat> I thought there was, you could do it if you had HCA approval, uh, but I'm not seeing that right at the moment. All right, there is pretty, I'm, I, I know I read in there somewhere that it, it Certain extenuating, here we go. Uh, bids received from any listed contractor in response to an invitation for bids shall be entered on the abstract of bids and rejected unless the agency head determines in writing 
there was a compelling reason to bid. That's what I was seeing there. Uh, okay, now one of the things it does say, when it's in the government's interest to do so, the CO may directly determine a prospective subcontractor's responsibility, such as involving medical supplies, urgent requirements, or substantial subcontracting. So generally, the primes do it, if it is done at all. Okay, why are we doing this? All right, let's look at an uh, look, let's look at an example here. Uh, so if I look at this award here, so why would you as a CO, if it is the prime's responsibility, and uh, unless you're, maybe you're buying medical supplies after a natural disaster, uh, and that there, you know there's a, a significant work by a subcontractor, uh, that would be a case where you might want to do it directly. But here's another reason why you as a, as a CO it would be helpful for you to, if it were easy for you to get a responsibility assessment on subawardees, you would like to. Okay, so if I go into Sam and look at this record here, I'm looking at a purchase order by the Coast Guard, and it was. Let's see what the type of work is. Some sort of electrical stuff, engine equipment. Sounds kind of serious. Not a lot of money, but and this uh, order was placed on August 2019. So August 7th, 2019. Now they made a sub award. This prime. W.W. Williams and Company doing this electrical work or electrical equipment work for the Coast Guard. It made a sub award to MTU America uh, five days after the award. How, how do I know that? Well, let's go find it. I'm going to get into this later. How do I know that this vendor here, W.W. Williams, made a sub award to MTU America? shortly after receiving this this award they ww williams subcontracted to mtu america in regards to this award how do you know well without using fed data check the only way that i know you could find out because i don't have access to fsrs so i, I would go to usa spending and i would do download center custom award data this is in the powerpoint a little bit later so now I'm in USA Spending, I would click, I hit Download Center, Custom Award. I'm gonna click on Sub Awards. I'm gonna click on Contracts. That's a Coast Guard, so that's a DHS award. And it was August, 2019, so that's an FY19. That's when I said the Sub Award was. Sub Awards, Contracts. DHS, I selected FY19, and I'm going to hit download. Just thinking. Well, that's thinking. I'll see if there's any thing up here. All right, looks like that downloaded into the zip file. I'm going to double click and I'm going to double click on the downloaded Excel file that USA Spending gave me. And here it is. These are all the sub awards for DHS in FY19 that have been reported to FSRS. Okay, I'm going to, just because I've done this before, I'm going to freeze the top pane. Why don't we highlight that in green? Now here's that W.W. W. Williams award. We said what I can do now is I can go find this PID because that should show up 
in one of these columns. Where is it? It should show up over here somewhere. Well, when we find it, it'll show up. There it is right there. So there's the, let's highlight that in yellow. That's under the PID column, 70Z, 70Z080. 19P2, you can see that that's that the when I down this is my USA spending. When I downloaded that for DHS and I opened it up, I found this value in the PID column. Okay, now if I keep going across, a little tough to read because there's so many columns, but here's the WW Williams Company, the Prime Award E, if you can see that. Prime Award E, so I know I'm in check. Let's keep going over to see if uh, this is the one for MTU America under the C. I'm still up in the prime columns here. And I'm getting over to, there it is, MTU America, right there, was the sub award E. Okay, now let's find the DUNS number from MTU America. There it is right there. And let's go out and see how responsible they are as a federal partner to get work done. I'm going to click on Sam. I'm going to hit search. Plug in the DUNS number. Uh, wait a minute. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I have no records found. Hmm. Let me uh, go to my PowerPoint because I know I got the Duns number in there. May have been a different Duns number than uh, what's on the SAM record, but it'll be the still be the same name. Okay, we're going to go with that DUNS number for MTU America. Okay, there's MTU America Inc. with this DUNS number. That is the same name here. That's the sub awardee parent does number. Do they have? Maybe that's the issue. There it is. Here's the Duns number here. So that's the parent Duns number. Here is MTU America's Duns number. So just to be sure on that one. And I'm, it actually left off to zero because I opened it in Excel, but you can see it ends in 6718. <clears throat> ends in 6718. So that is the right Duns number. All right, anyway, okay. So hopefully you're staying with me. Uh, found the prime award in FPDSNG, found the matching sub award in USA spending, plugged in the Duns number. Let's hit view details. And we're going to go to, remember, we have to check FAR 52, 2095, and 20911. We will look at two. Oh, this is going to take just a second to come up. Sam is thinking, here we go. 52, 2095. Okay, now MTU America has checked that they are presently indicted or otherwise criminally or civilly charged.
And the key point was, uh, if you look at that SAM record, let me go back to the, so this is MTU America. Let me go back to the core data. Uh, this record was activated in July. The prime award was August 7th. The sub award was August 12th, subsequent to when the SAM record was in there. So, Coast Guard now has a sub awardee who, at the time of the sub award, was under indictment, at least according to their SAM record. I, I'm not going to go through this same example. I can if you want to, but uh, here's one. I believe this is for Army 925 2018 award. About a month later, they sub award to Engineered Door Industries Inc. And uh, at that time, they had a tax delinquency, also per 52295. I got a couple of questions here, I think. Uh, Get rid of some of them. The sub does not have the sub does not have to have a Dunn's number to make the list. That's Geraldine. Um, you know that's that's an interesting question. You can get I have seen sub awards too, like foreign, you know, that miscellaneous foreign vendors and uh, things like that. So which has a generic Dunn's number. Uh, but, you know, that's an interesting question. I, I've never really looked at that. Some of these are not nine digits because they're, I'm missing the leading zero. I wonder if we sorted that. The question is, do you have to have a DUNS number to get a sub-award? That's what I think uh, Geraldine's asking. Uh, if I sort by, s this is just using DHS for one year. Sub award he does. In this case, they all seem to. Gerald, Geraldine, but I, I I don't know the answer to that. Where does the prime report this to? All right, that would be FSRS. Uh, I don't know. I, we did a webinar on that a while ago. How that works, but. What happens is an FPDS and G, they mark uh, that subcontract plan with one of the one of the codes that says a subcontract plan is required. Uh, such that would be. This is a little bit out of scope for this, but if I go to FPDS and G work site and I come down to the data dictionary and I look up subcontract plan data field 11b subcontract plan let's say in an award you as the co they meet the requirements you say you know they have to have a individual subcontract plan you put the code f then that then enables the vendor uh, to report the sub awards in esrs and fsrs esrs is the uh, aggregate overview of their subawarding efforts. FSRS is where they get down to the individual subawardee, DUNS, vendor name, obligated amount for that subcontract for that subawardee. That goes into FSRS. And then FSRS uh, feeds its data to USA spending, I believe on a daily basis. I'd have to double check though. Uh, so the answer is, Geraldine, uh, many people, when we did that, do confuse ESRS with FSRS. So they'll look, ESRS, I'm looking at records. Uh, the Prime has been reporting their subawards. I can see their total aggregate subawardee information in ESRS. Doesn't help you in terms of USA spending. They got to report it at the detail level in FSRS. Uh, okay. 
Um, Monique, did you have a comment or from earlier? I know I've been sipping along here, but no. Okay. Rebecca, did you have something you wanted to say or comment? Collaboration on what? Oh, no, I was just curious as to was it difficult to search them because the it only said active records. And I know I've in the past had to go through and found out that it, if I click the button, that also says and not active. I forget what it says. Right. On, but it also shows like that sometimes it's been a situation where I'm like, well, they don't even have an active duns and situation. Therefore, that, that is a definite red flag to me because um, yeah, it shows you I'm, previous yes. records. So on this one, so I left off the leading zero, but it, I could put search here. I think and what um, Rebecca is saying is that you could come here and you could be nothing. You say, well, uh, wow, do I got the wrong Dunn's number? It doesn't exist. And then you're saying, if you click, maybe they're inactive. Their SAM record is inactive. They can apply that and you can have things pop up that way it'll, good point yeah it'll show you previous if anything's had it before i know i've run into situations where previous vendors um they were inactive for a period of time or they're no longer active but they were active when the contract was awarded and so right. if i'm looking up something for the past you know i go oh this doesn't exist well it existed at that time but there it is no longer active right okay thanks uh, uh, all right um, yeah, so uh, the question is, what if the subawardee is a small business whereby a subcontract plan is not required, right? Unless you check that one of those, unless you check that subcontract plan field in FPDS and G, such that you know there's a there's a quite a few that register for, you know, you can pick an F plan required, incentive included, plan C, D, E is 2014, F, G or H. You know, if, if small business, and then you put a plan not included, that shuts down sub sub awardee sub contracting reporting. Uh, even if the prime wanted to, they couldn't put anything in ESRS or FSRS. Hey, now one of the things we've said that MTU was under indictment. We said that engineered door in industries has a tax delinquency. I'm going to say half the time at least. They put it's a typo. They're not actually under indictment. They just check the wrong box. So the first thing to do is check with the vendor that and say, hey, did you really mean to say you were under indictment? Uh, and Sam, oh, we, we, I, uh, no. So they go in and correct their Sam record, and that's important too because when GAO comes along and says, hey, why uh, Coast Guard? Why are you making all these awards to, uh, uh, or why is all your primes making? Sub awards to vendors who are under indictment. Uh, you know the answer that well, it's that's not the case. There were typos in Sam. Uh, GAO is still going to look. Uh, you know, for when they when those boxes are checked in Sam, GAO is going to look that procedures were followed according to how the boxes were checked, not not according to how the boxes should have been checked. And we'll we'll see that in the. Uh, there's a GAO reference later here. So here's one too. Now here's one that is another great reason why uh, if you look at this ward here, another great reason why you, you as a CO, it's not your responsibility really to check the responsibility of your subawardees, but it sure would be nice to know and hope, uh, Hopefully your primes are doing it, but here's one where you would really want to know uh, the responsibility of your subawardees. And this one is not subject to debate, I'll say. So let's look at this one. This is an active award by uh, the Army. So if I click on the latest sign mod there, Incidentally, if you saw, I, I just recently learned how to do this. If I click on PID colon, I put in the PID, then to find the latest sign mod, instead of scrolling through all these pages, you can sort it right here. I mean, maybe I never got over to this column before, but I clicked on that sort by date sign. Now I got the latest one. Okay, this thing's not ending for another week, another few weeks. 
This is Department of Army. And I'm going to look at, I'm going to go back to USA spending. And I am going to download sub awards, uh, Department of Defense. And then for the sub agency, I'm going to pick Army. And I'm going to look for FY20 awards. And we'll download that. And I'm going to look for this PID in there. And while we're waiting to do that, well, there it is right now. Come on up. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to freeze that top row. I'm going to come along. I'm going to grab that PID that we just looked at that is still active. So in other words, there's still work being performed here. And now I've found it. I'm going to highlight it in yellow. I'm going to come over and I'm going to find that sub award E. Is this the one I want? I don't think that's the one I want. <laughs> No, so it must be more than one. Here's another one. There's that pit right there. W52 P1J. I'm going to come over to find my sub. Well, there's a lot of subs on this one. So I'm going to go find the sub that I really want to find. Instead of looking through all of them, and we'll just zero in that way. Okay, let's look at this row. First of all, there is the sub awardee Dunn's number. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to come over and check to see that this was the the PID that we looked for that is still active. We just saw it in FPDS and G. It's the same one, W52P1J10C0062. And one other thing is you can check when the subaward was made. That subaward was made in December. All right, let's go see what this subaward is doing in SAM. Put in the Duns number. Boom. The Bard. When were they the Bard? Uh, after the sub award. So uh, it's possible the prime has taken them out. But the point being, as, a, as an army, you have an active award. The prime made a sub award to this vendor in December, Gulf Link Venture. And hopefully that sub awardee is checked because this vendor just got the bar. And you sure wouldn't want them working on that. You wouldn't want them as a prime. Uh, well, you might let them finish out the work, uh, but you sure would want them on your uh, watch list. Um, and I would assert the same thing's true for sub awardees. If you have sub awardees working on your contracts, hey, they just get the bard. Okay, maybe let them finish up the work that they're working on, but uh, let's get them out the doors soon as possible.
that's uh, you know I'm editorializing there, but that's the impression I get uh, when we notify our COCSs we work with uh, in these situations. Uh, okay, um, let's do a poll. Uh, we're starting to run a little bit out of time. I'm running a little bit of. Uh, have you ever conducted a? Contractor responsibility assessment on a subawardee. All right, I, I need to move it along, so I'm going to close that, share the results. So most haven't, not on a subawardee. Virtually, you know, 90% no, 10% yes. Then I got another one. How about this one? Have you required a CRA from a prime awardee? In other words, if you said from your primes, if you said, hey, look, send me, I know you're making subawards, send me the documentation that you've assessed that these subawardees are responsible vendors. And Okay. So something, uh, I, I think I've shown that in certain cases, you as the CEO would like to have some visibility into the sub awardees responsibility, but um, not uh, given the difficulty I would imagine of one to a lesser degree doing the CRA and to a major degree finding out who your sub awardees are would be my guess. Uh, it's hard to do these assessments. Okay. Uh, question. When a vendor becomes debarred, are contracting officers of all awards notified? Not automatically, Denise. We do. Uh, if you're part of the Fed Data Check product, uh, we will let you know when your primes become debarred. If you have an active award with a prime awardee, and that prime awardee becomes debarred, we, as part of the Fed Data Check product, will let the CO know. Um, we're not doing that automatically for subawardees. Even even we're not doing that. Okay, uh, where can you find your subawardees? I think we went through that already. I've gone. Here's you know the examples again. Now go to USA Spending. Uh, I know we got people from uh, a lot of different vendors here. So if you go to usaspending.gov, you know, I don't have access to FSRS. Presumably that would be another way to do it. But if you go to usaspending.gov, download center, custom award, you check these two boxes. Then you pick your department, they call it agency. Uh, I think I know we got someone from Commerce here, and I'm not. I know we got someone from NOAA here. So now I'm do do downloading all the sub awards for NOAA, and you got to do it by fiscal year. Or they got some other time periods, not more than one year. So then I would get it for FY18, and you hit download. Gives you that zip file that I've shown a couple times. So the drawback here too, one of the things you notice is it's not gonna list your FPDSNG prepared user or last modified user. So it's not gonna, 
it's, it's not going to have your, you, uh, Mr. or Ms. CEO, it's not going to have your FPDSNG user ID or anything else. So you have to know your PIDs. And then once you know your PIDs, then you could find your subawardees. So that would be a drawback. Another drawback would be you, you can only pull it one fiscal year at a time. If your Fed data check, uh, let's see who I can log in as here. Uh, how about if I log in as, um, and, and uh, I'll do interior. So I logged in, this is for those departments that subscribe to Fed Data Check. Um, logged into feddatacheck.net. Any contracting official can get, a, can get a login if you're one of the departments that subscribe. You click on, if you saw what I did then, you know, I'm logged in as interior. I can click on HHS if I want to, but I'm not gonna get anywhere. I, I have to click on my department's logo. And then off of the main menu, we have listed all the subawards. So I would, if you saw that, go back there. Subawards, subawards. And let's just run it for all. Well, let's run it for National Park Service. Uh, NPS. So I can look at sub awards, let's say going back FY19 and FY20. <clears throat> so we download uh, the USA spending sub award data going back the last six fiscal years every week. So now uh, I have a listing here of the prime award. The FPDSNG last modified user and prepared user, and all of the sub awards. So now, what I could do is let's say I'm the CEO as the last modified user, I can sort by that. I can export it to Excel. So now if I'm uh, Albert O'Mara, I know I got to worry about these, these four right here, these four sub awards. And I thought I put their Dunn's number, but I got their Dunn's number right there. So what I can do is I can copy that out to Notepad. And I have the DUNS numbers of the people that if I wanted to check their responsibility, I could. Pretty easy way to identify the subawardees associated with my awards. <clears throat> we'll get back to that. So with Fed Data Check, you log in, you run a report off the main menu. The benefit is we give you the FPDSNG prepared user and last modified user. You can sort the report by that. That way you can quickly pull out the subawardees that you are interested in. Uh, I got Alex, someone tried to download the PowerPoint off of the handouts and couldn't. Alex, I don't know what's going on there, but other people have pointed that out. I'm going to email the PowerPoint out after the webinar. Okay, so whether you have used the Fed data check report or you've gone through USA spending, downloaded it for those years you're interested in, found the PIDs you're interested in, that would be tough. Pulled out the DUNS number, remember from that Excel spreadsheet. So this is kind of a manually intensive method. What do you do now? 
Well, and Sam, we, we actually already went through that. Um, so if we're doing it for DK drilling of New York, you would grab the Duns number. Come on. <clears throat> you would grab the Duns number, you would go to Sam, search. So that's the Duns number you found from that download out of USA Spending or from uh, running our report. Now that could be one where, let's see if this applying the filter Nope, I couldn't find that one. So DK drilling, I couldn't find that one. Let's see if I could find MGV Geotechnical Group. Search. So I found them. So to do a responsibility assessment in SAM, I look for the purple initially. I don't see a purple. Reps and certs. Then I gotta come down to 2095 and 20911. 2095. Are not, have not, are not, are not. I'm looking for anything with R's, nothing there. So they look okay there. Let's see if they got anything current in the way of tax liability, two checks there. So they look pretty good in SAM. I'm doing this manually. I would then come over to FAPIS, plug in that nine digit and see if they got any determinations for cause or default, nothing. So manually, they look pretty good. And you would want to take screenshots, document it. So it's seven clicks, three screenshots, Internet browser screens out in Word if you really wanted to go through it, take a screenshot, document they're responsible, and so on. Here's this GAO record that uh, really showed that most CEOs are not checking 2095 and 20911 in SAM. I mentioned you have to go over to FAPIS as well. It's also something you should do on a CRA. Now, one thing is, you know, on FAPIS is the data is not that reliable. So let's take a look at an example. If I go to FPDS and G, and I look at this PID, Safeguard Document Destruction, Inc. I'm gonna hit view. So that's a pretty good BAOV, over a million dollars. Supplemental Agreement for Work Within Scope. So no termination for default. Let's go look at uh, FAPIS. I'm gonna grab that DUNS number, 7844. We'll go back over to FAPIS. Put in that DUNS, Safeguard Document Destruction Inc. Oh gosh, they got a termination for cause or termination for cause. Maybe they're not that responsible. Let's go look at it. 2823. It's the same. Same one, 282, 283, 21318, FDX. So what's my point? It's a false positive. FAPIS is saying they were terminated for cause of default for that award, but when you go check it in FPDSNG, it's not. Now, maybe they were terminated for cause of default on something else, but it wasn't that. So that's a false positive. 
they said they were terminated for cause of default in FAPIS. You look in FPDSG, it's not, and then you have false negatives. You can check this one out when I email it. You can look at that kid in FPDSG, it's way above the SAT in terms of the base and all options value. It was terminated for cause or default, uh, either cause or default, one of those two. And yet it did not make way, did not make its way through to actually being reported in FAPIS. So you got it both ways. Okay, what's a better way to do it? We felt, we said uh, it was the one we were looking at here. What you can also do, and maybe you can try this at, at home there. You can work along with me here. Do a uh, new email. And it would be great if some people did this too. So send, just like you're sending an email, regular email to anybody, the two is going to be vendor report at feddatacheck.net. And the subject line is going to be the DUNS number, 961. 875-312. That's all you got to do. Send. And we're going to wait about one minute, and we're going to get back a nice contractor responsibility assessment report. And actually, I have one already done here. So here's one here that I ran earlier. Should be coming up. Where did it? No, that's not it. Uh, this one. No, this one. Well, here was the, here's one on safeguard destruction. That was the company we said had a. I think it was a false positive. Um, but we will. T we. By sending that email, you get back this report. It's in a PDF format. It gives you, we go out to SAM and we check for you, 2095, 20911, whether they're debarred, debt subject to offset, uh, which is not the same thing as a tax delinquency. We also check in FAPIS and SAM. Uh, so here we're showing you that yes, they have a record in FAPIS for termination of cause, but this is also telling you there is no corresponding FPDS and G. So that would be a sign that uh, it's really a false positive. Looks like this FAPIS record is bogus. No record, no FPDSNG records going back the last five years involving a termination for cause or default for this vendor. We go through uh, their NAICS and their small business size for their NAICS, POCs, contracting history. Uh, so anyway, um, let's do this from the beginning. The point being, you could do it manually. Uh, the FAPIS is going to be not that reliable. That's my statement. Uh, or you can send an email to vendor report at feddatacheck.net, put in the DUNS number. One minute, you'll get back that report we were looking at. Anybody with a gov address can do it. You don't have to be a subscriber to Fed Data Check. We're leaving it open for everybody at this time. So you can try it out no matter who you are. Another thing you can do is a batch uh, process. Again, we're leaving this open for anybody. But remember when we uh, downloaded that report here. So let's say we'll use someone else uh, we're looking at C Winters. She can look at her three here. So there's her three. If I copy that into Notepad, and you just want the Duns number, that's the same Duns numbers. So she really only has two. I'm gonna hit Save As. Imagine you could have five, ten, up to fifty. You can put 
NPS CRA requests, whatever you, it doesn't matter what the file name is. I just gave it a file name. Point is being, I got a notepad with two Duns numbers. Well, let's just, let's look like the same again. We'll just mock one up. But imagine you have 10, 15, up to 20. You can do new email, vendor report, see attached, and then up to 50 requests, you hit send and you'll get back 50, up to 50 reports. So the point being, you could run that subaward report out of Fed data check, pull out your DUNS number, paste it in a, in a notepad file, and you will get a responsibility assessment on all your subawardees. Finally, a good thing to do, we're encouraging everyone to do, uh, who's a, a subscriber to Fed Data Check, is send an email to CO report at feddatacheck.net. I do it once a month. Don't have to put anything in the subject line. You could put hello. It doesn't matter. Subject lines are relevant. All you got to do is send that email to CO report at feddatacheck.net, and you will get back your own personal report that includes any outstanding FPDS and GP data quality issues you might have to look at, but it also has a expiring awards. But for the topic of today, uh, we, will, we will show you any prime awardees uh, that have a potential responsibility issue. This one here has a federal tax delinquency and any sub-awardees. Let's look at Jason here. So Jason doesn't have any prime awardees that he's associated with that have a responsibility issue, but he does have a couple sub-awardees. ACOM Energy is a sub-awardee on this award. Uh, Jason is either the, uh, what is he? I think we'd look at whether it's a prepared by, oh, prepared by. So Jason was the prepared by user on this. We looked in USA spending and found that ACOM is a sub on this contract and they are presently indicted. They've checked that. GE Steam Power is a sub awardee on this. According to USA spending, they're also presently indicted, according to Sam, when I ran this report. So just to recap that, uh, find your subawardees either in USA spending or via Fed data check one at a time. Dunn's number in the subject line. Send it to vendor report. You get back everything you want to know about responsibility assessment. We're customizing it report for some departments, but you'll get a, you'll meet the requirements of FAR 91. Uh, if you can pull out all your subawardees out of uh, USA spending or through that Fed data check report I showed, put them in a notepad file. You get them, you'll send it, you'll get back all the reports at once. Once a month, send an email to CO report at feddatacheck.net. We'll tell you about any prime awardees or subawardees on active awards that currently have something regarding responsibility you might want to double check with them on. Okay, this is an exercise I've run out of time, but uh, on how you could find uh, uh, primes who are not reporting their sub awards to FSRS. Uh, don't, I'm sorry, I ran out of time, but I have a worksheet, that Word document that I'm going to send. Uh, we'll walk you through how to do that. If you subscribe to Fed Data Check, we have our own report you can run. Sub awards, sub awards missing. Was that? Uh, anyway, there's the menu. You'll see the menu over in the left sub awards. You click sub awards missing. We'll tell you which primes are not 
not reporting to FSRS and they should be. All right, in review. Uh, if your primes are not diligent, diligently reporting subawards to FSRS, that's at the detail level, you cannot identify which prime awards have no associated subawards in USA spending, but should. So if your primes don't report their subawards, you're not gonna know it, you can't find them in USA spending. And if you were manually performing CRAs, if you're going into SAM and clicking around, going into FAPIS, clicking around, then the assertion is, well, yeah, if one and two are true, you can still do it accurately if you do it manually. You cannot accurately access your contractor responsibility risk. You're at risk of having a debarred subawardee or one with a history of terminations for cause, default, tax delinquencies, indictments. Recommendation. You know, here's a thought. Ask your primes. Say, hey, look, you've made a lot of subawards. Show me what you're doing to verify that they're responsible citizens, responsible vendors. Be an interesting request, and you given that the primes should be doing it per the FAR, then uh, they should have it. Use robotic process automation to generate your CRAs. That's what we're doing. When you send that email to us, we have an automated system that uh, takes your email, grabs the DUNS number off the uh, subject line. We go out to SAM and check right then what their responses were. Uh, we look at FAPIS, uh, we download FAPIS every day, FPDSNG every day, look for terminations for cause and a fault, put together that report, and send it back to you. It's all done. No human, you know, human hands. I went over today. Sorry about that. Uh, and I kept talking a lot. Um, Sue, I'm going to send out a uh, training certificate. That's how you get credit. Thank you. Uh, CO report, any way to get it for a CO who has left our agency so I can follow up on his contracts? Yes, there is, Stuart. I'll write that down, and I'll email you on how we could do that. Stuart, uh, or CO. All right. Uh, would you be so kind as to send me two handouts? Neither would open for me. Denise, yes, Den. Denise, I'm going to do that. Thanks. Can the report be run for the CS? Yordell, yes, it can. Just send us an email, co report at feddatacheck.net. I'm going to send out the handouts to everybody. Okay. Can we contact you on possible other aggregate reports for contractors? Jay, I, we'd love to talk to you. Jay Parsick. I'm oh, sorry, I shouldn't. Have. Anyway, uh, we're doing that now for a number of agencies who would like their own uh, enhancement to the CRA, such as looking in Dun and Bradstreet or looking in a veterans database to make sure that there are they actually are disabled veterans or have enough veterans working on their company. So we do customize our CRA report. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I'm going to send out the handouts. Boy, I did not get to a lot of questions. Um, yeah, that's that download. Okay. Thanks, Sue. Email Rebecca left. I'm going to send it out there. Yep, you can use it for sub awardees, Stuart. Uh, Jay, I will contact you afterwards. Okay, thanks, Jay. Well, sometimes if the vendor marks their SAM to not allow the public, yeah, that's true. Uh, we we will if we can't get to it, uh, we'll say that it's not public. We're trying to get an account that will let us look at that non-public data, but that's a you got to sign in. That's true. That could be a problem. About one out of it's like one out of 10 or one out of 20 don't make their SAM information public. Okay, I think we got them all. Uh, Darlene, did you have a comment or anything? <clears throat> 
No, I'm fine. Thank you. All right. Thanks, darling. I'm running way over. Uh, if people are still interested, this is quick. I'll send this all in the PowerPoint I'm going to send out. That's me, uh, Vice President, Business Intelligent Products, other people on our staff. Um, I have to say we are, if you don't mind me saying so, we were thrilled to be notified recently that we were the NOAA Small Business of the Year. Uh, you can do a Fed data check trial for four months for five thousand dollars. Good way to see if it if it would be useful for you or not. Uh, virtually all of our uh, I would say eighty percent of our subscribers started out on a trial basis. We're going to send you that CLP certificate tomorrow. I might get it today. I haven't told to say we're not a small business anymore, Potomac Wave. You might be able to get to as a small business, but we rather you didn't. We have graduated out of those. That's it, everybody. Thanks for staying later. Uh, I will stay on if someone wants to raise their hand. Uh, if anybody has a question. All right, thanks. I I uh I appreciate everyone being on and uh we'll see you next time on uh category management. That'll be in about a month. See you everyone. <laughs>